Hey guys, welcome back to Precision Machine Shed. I know it's been a while since I've made a new video, but here we go. I'm in my new shop, which is halfway completed. As you can maybe see back there, I'm still working on electrical and all that good stuff. But what better way to start out a new video for a while that I've been away with this guy right here. So this is kind of a, a neat thing that I picked up. If you watched one of my last videos with the hardness tester, I, I briefly mentioned this guy. Um, so what this is, is a clop, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, shaper, and it is, I believe, a model 450. I'm not positive yet, I haven't, uh, there's a few measurements, according to the table here, it's pretty, it's right close to a 450 model, but I haven't tested the stroke on it, and it's supposed to be a 450 millimeter, so it cranks out to around 17, 18 inches. Uh, so it's a decent sized little shaper, but it's still relatively small. Um, and in my little shop here, it's going to take up a, a hunk of real estate, but, you know, let's uh, see what we can do. So I haven't touched this thing since I got it about two months ago. And the guy I got it from told me that it had been sitting um, in its current location where it was at for probably the past 30 years. The nice thing about this guy is it appears to be in fairly good shape. I haven't cranked it up or turned it on or anything yet, but I have plugged it in and my first idea or my first thought with this guy was to try and get the motor running to see if the motor would actually run. There is some things on the inside I got to go through and clean this whole thing off. The All the ways and the, everything is just caked in dirt and grease and mouse pee and all sorts of fun stuff because it, it sat in a barn basically before I got it. It is in relatively good shape because the, the coatings that are on it, uh, they appears to have used, this guy appears to use grease zerk, so it runs with grease, which is kind of odd. I'll have to double check find, if I can find a manual for this guy. I just want to make sure that those are correct and they shouldn't be oil. You would think they would be oil. Uh, most of the other, you know, there's oil cups on the shafts and stuff here. These are all grease zerks. So maybe it is just a greased up machine. This is going to be a bit of a project to get this guy going, I believe. Um, I hate, to, I want to probably take some of this stuff apart. Although I know it's going to be a, a kind of a pain. I'm not big on taking shapers apart. I've had a bad history of taking shapers apart. This is actually my third shaper that I've owned. My first one was a seven inch Delta Amco, little tiny guy. And you can check out a video I did probably three or four years ago about making a little safety razor case on that guy. It was kind of cool. I didn't know nothing about shapers though. I have no clue, no clue at the time. But uh, thanks to A-Bomb and a few other guys that have been running these guys lately, um, I have a much better idea and I've ordered some books and stuff and you do some research and you figure it out. My second shaper was uh, Atlas 7D, which are nice little machines, but they're just kind of small for what I wanted to do and I wanted a machine about this size to, to try and, you know, be able to do some larger projects. You know, with a 7-inch shaper you can't do... You can do a lot with them, but the stuff that I want to do, it always seems to be like eight or nine inch piece of work that you're trying to do. So we'll get a little closer look at this guy and uh, see some of the features of it. This is a German made machine. How it ended up here, uh, there is a dealer sticker on the other side from, I believe, somewhere out of New York. Yes, Kurt Orban Company Incorporated, New York. New York, New York, or just New York? This says New York. Who knows where in New York? The tricky thing about this is, like I said, we'll plug it in here. I'll show you. Maybe you guys can give me a little hand on trying to get this motor functioning. It does have a NEMA 14-30 plug, like similar to your household uh, clothes dryer, which is a 30-amp, uh, four-wire, 220-volt uh, plug-in. However, this machine, I haven't cracked the motor open yet, but the motor is rated, and it's all in German, of course, and I don't sprechen in Deutsch, um, but it's a 220 or 440 volt motor, and then my switch here is a 380 volt, 15 amp reversible switch. 
for some reason it's got a reversible switch on this guy, I don't know why, but I think they all came like that. And the odd thing about this guy is I've noticed a lot of the, the clop shapers, or slope, or however you say it, they have uh, this DPAP, they call it, and I can't remember right offhand what it's called, but it's a, the motor has a rubber wheel on it and it drives a big flywheel. So they're supposed to be pretty quiet operating and nice machines. I guess these are kind of top of the line over in Germany. But getting back to my point, the odd thing was most of these machines that I've seen, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of them are in Germany and over in Europe, but that drive system tends to be on the opposite side. And I have seen very few of them with the drive system on the uh, right side, I guess it would be, when you're operating a machine. So if you will please bear with me with my audio, I'm trying a new uh, lavalier mic setup, and we'll see. I know it's prone to background noise, so let me know how it does, and uh, I can adjust later on. So this guy came with not much of anything. I mean, there's not really much to shapers in the, in the grand scheme of things. There is a tool holder here. It's not necessarily the correct tool holder, but it would actually probably function for the uh, all intended purposes. Clapper box free. The compound is free. That's the compound, I can't remember. Um, this is the original vise. There's a few guys on YouTube that have these shapers and they have this original vise. One of the problems I've read or they've talked about is actually the clamping force on these is not always the greatest, so a lot of guys will take this, uh, these two dynamic jaws, turn this one into a static jaw out on the end, and then it, they get quite a bit more clamping force on it, actually. The nice thing about it, I, I don't know, I'll probably leave it like it is for a while, but the nice thing is it's got a, an indexed rotary base on it, so that's one nice thing. The bad thing about this, I wish I had a universal table that would be extremely well. It does tilt to a degree angle uh, around a central axis here, but there is no forward and aft tilt at the top of the bed, or the top of the box, I guess technically you would say on these guys. So as you can see here is a control. That's on, that's off, which seems kind of backwards to me, but maybe, uh, you know, you grab, pull on it and grab it. You want to shut it off, on off switch. And this machine originally looks to have had a clapper box razor on it. So here is the sliding mechanism and the plate and the holder for the cable. So I'm pretty sure I can make this work, um, put it back into working order. I just got to find a few parts and that kind of make it work. But uh, all the parts except I'm not sure this looks a little different out here, so I'm not sure what the deal is with the clapper box as far as the lifter goes, but I have all the major components, I believe, to actually make the lifter work for this machine. Some of these machines had the auto down feed, usually the larger ones. This was kind of this 450, and they went up to 550s. They usually had them. Uh, it was an option, I would assume. Some of you Experts on these guys might be able to help me. So the, the very back of the box to the front is 16 and 3 quarter inches. Or approximately, I'll put it on the screen in millimeters or centimeters. And the opposite direction going across is about 12 and a half. Everything I could find online tells me that this is very close to a 450, model 450 machine. The, the box on the 450 is like a quarter inch bigger. So I'm not sure if I'm uh, just not taking it, something into account correctly here or if, if uh, that's the actual size of it. I'm not going to run the, the RAM out yet because it's all caked up and I want to try and clean those out. So here's the you know, left or right direction of the, the box on the table. And then I am missing a handle here, but we can make a new one of those. I'll probably make a nice ball bearing one that'll, that I can actually crank on instead of just a static metal one like it's on the rest of the machine. At some point in time, this did have a Bakelite knob here. And it's going to be kind of a tricky piece to make because there's actually a round part in the middle of that. And it was like, almost like it was baked onto that and molded onto that piece. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do there yet. I'd like to put this back on. And I'm not quite sure exactly what this does. 
loosen something. Obviously, there's enough there. Maybe it just keeps everything from falling apart. But I got two pieces of that, so I can have to make something there. All right, so here's the big drive pulley, and this is the, the geared shaft that goes into the, the flywheel, which drives the arm. So here's the motor and the rubber pulley, for a lack of a better term, that pushes. So when you engage it, it releases tension. And then when you disengage it, it just enough tension to, to let it go. So when you engage it, it's, it's on there. So that's their drive system on these DPAPs. So here's the opposite side of this guy. Come with this little wrench. And I believe this is a holder for a light. And looking inside there, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna really show you in there. All it is a, a gear and an arm, so there's not a lot to look at in there. But there is some uh, little mouse house in there, so I got to clean that out. And all the gears look actually really good. And unfortunately, this is not like an oil sump system like the G and E's. Um, and I believe the step toe maybe had oil sumps in them. So when I was looking, I just realized when I was back looking at the uh, Mo uh, on off switch it's a two-speed motor that would explain why there's two position switch on it I didn't uh, think about that a second ago but it is a two-speed or a two-speed motor and it's got three speeds on it so it is a six-speed shaper so it goes down to 16 up to 169 so 16 to 169 strokes per minute and then all you know several different uh, choices in between so, I mean, that's kind of the gist of the machine. The big project now is going to be, of course, getting this guy cleaned up, getting all the bearing surfaces cleaned before I actually run the thing and getting the motor working. That is actually my big project right now. So I'm going to hopefully have a few folks help me out and get this thing running. Uh, if you have any comments, be sure to let me know. So I was going to show you here the motor plate too, hopefully. Maybe some of you German-speaking folks out there can help me out. I know it's probably not the best view of everything, but take a look and see what you think. So it says D machine, I'm thinking 45484, that's the type. Uh, that's the machine number, sorry, 45484, type K15B. 1.1 kilowatt, 1.5 PS, 1710 or 3450 RPM. I'm trying to read this stuff. 60 per second, 440 to 20 volt, 22, 2.2 or 4.3 amp, and 0 0.2, 0 0.82 cosine. All right, so here you are looking at the motor pulley. And I know as soon as I turn this on, people are going to tell me exactly what's wrong, hopefully. So if you do know, throw it in the comment below. Uh, I would greatly appreciate any help actually getting this thing running, the motor in particular, because um, that's my big obstacle right now. I can get everything else working, but the motor to me is a little bit of a mystery at the moment. But And so this, I'm not sure which speed this is, but it'll be one or the other. So it like it's not getting enough power. Here's the other way. Same thing. So if I spin it a little bit, try it the other way, try it the other way. So there it's running. So I'm assuming that's high speed, but it's running about a quarter speed, I'm assuming, not even a quarter speed. So we'll shut it off here. There's slow speed. All right, so I think with the next video, what I'm going to end up doing is actually dig into this motor a little bit and see if we can actually figure out the problem with it. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's either a wiring issue or there's something up with the actual brushes, something inside the motor. I'm hoping it's still 220 volt, not 440, because then I got to go through and get some step transformers or all sorts of stuff I don't know about yet, but I'll have to figure it out. Look forward to getting this guy going. I still have, as you can see, my shop is <laughs> pretty unfinished. Got my stairwell up to the upstairs, so that's a big step forward. And I got sheeting starting to go on the wall here. So 
hopefully in the next uh, month or so I'll be able to get this guy actually up and running and I'll have a shop that actually functions the way it should and, and uh, not a bunch of stuff sitting around here and there. But anyways, till next time, I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. If you have any comments, be sure to comment below and let me know any feedback that you may have. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook where I put up, you know, stuff on there that I can put up a lot easier than I can on YouTube right away. So it's a good way to follow me and keep track of some of these projects that I got going on on a regular basis. As always, stay safe on your machines and shoot safe. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.